All right, how's everybody doing this evening? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And today, what I have for everyone, or this evening rather, what I have for everyone is my full review of the T95Z Plus Android TV box. So, maybe you're new to the channel or you're returning, but typically what I do is I shoot my unboxing and first impressions video then my review period starts, and once I feel like I got a handle on everything I want to cover with you guys and gals, then it's full review time. So without further ado, let me flip the camera around, and let's jump into this full review. Alright, let's go. Alright, so we got the camera flipped around, and let's jump into this. Now starting off, the first thing I want to do is just give y'all my opinion of the hardware and the software and the overall build quality and design. Let's start off with the build quality and design. Now, from a build quality and design standpoint, as y'all saw in the unboxing and first impressions video, I think this Android TV box has a really nice, compact, and convenient build quality and design, while also offering all the ports needed for this type of setup. So you can set this up to just about anything you could think of. You could set it up to a TV, which is what I'm using here for you guys this evening, you can set it up to a monitor, so on and so forth. And also what I think is real nice is that this TV box incorporates Wi-Fi as well as an Ethernet jack. So whether you have good Wi-Fi or you need to hardwire your TV box for better performance, and I always recommend that you guys hardwire if you want the best performance possible, this TV box should support that. So again, talking about the overall hardware and design, it is top notch. Okay? Up next now, let's talk about the, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into the hardware and let's talk about the software, okay? Now, this TV box, as I said in the unboxing and first impressions, has 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of onboard storage. Out of the box, I think you have available 11 gigs, okay? And out of the box, it comes with about uh, 31 apps, okay? So really good stuff there. But you also have the ability to add a micro SD card, and this device is running a full version of Android. So if I just show you real quickly, if we jump into the settings here, you can see it right there. If I stop clicking the mouse, this device is running Android 7.1.2 Nugget, and it is, for all intents and purposes, pure stock Android with a slight overlay on top. But... If you want to get rid of that TV style overlay, you can just as easily sideload or sign into your Google account and download a regular Android launcher. Then you have the regular Android experience. Okay? All right. So good stuff there. Okay? And that pretty much covers all of the hardware. Now, jumping back, as I said, we're running stock Android with a slight overlay. So you can see. If you jump home, we have on-screen keys, and we also have keys on the remote, and I will provide pictures of the remote right now as I talk about it. So you can see we have a nice layout on the remote. We got uh, volume up and down on your right-hand upper side. We got um, controls for your TV, because you can program this remote to work with your TV. So when you power on the box, it will turn on the TV, you can mute, pause, playback, so on and so forth. And we got quick launches to some neat little stuff. So you can see in the middle, in the upper middle, we got an LED light notification here. And that's how you can control the LED notification lights on the box itself. Well, it's not really a notification light, but you can toggle between the colors, so on and so forth. And then below that, we have a KD player launch button which is really just an overlay for Kodi so you can install full Kodi on this Android TV box and it works so really good stuff there and then as we move into the middle of the remote as you guys can see we have our home button in the top left we got our OK and arrow buttons in the middle we got our back button in the top right we got our arrow key which lets me navigate through the system 
using the on-screen arrow that y'all can see there off to the side of the remote. And then we got another function key down here as well as our standard uh, buttons, our one through nine buttons and zero and a shortcut to launch the built-in web browser. And then we got a backslash delete key as well. Now talking about the remote itself, I don't really like this remote. I feel like they could have incorporated a built-in keyboard into this remote, which would make it easier. Now it is functional, but if you're going to use this setup, this TV box setup, I recommend that you get either a uh, keyboard and remote combo or you get a keyboard and mouse. And what's also nice about this TV box is that it supports full Bluetooth 4.0 and it will connect up to just about anything that has Bluetooth built into it. So that's really, really nice. So if you want to get yourself a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, that will work. Okay. So we covered the hardware on the box itself. We covered the remote. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the software, which I already started to cover. So you have your stock Android experience with your nice little skinned overlay on top. So you can see they have a dedicated web browser button, okay, which is just standard internet. And they also have preloaded Firefox. So one little neat trick that you can do, because they do give you full access to the Google Play Store, but maybe you don't trust these off-brand um, uh, TV box manufacturers. You can sideload the apps that you want to use without signing into your Google account and still use them. Okay? So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. So if, you, you know, if you're a little cautious and you want to be extra safe, I would recommend that you sideload the apps you want to use and then get up behind a VPN and then you should be good to go. Okay? Now there's tons of VPNs out there, a bunch of free ones, and all of that stuff is real easy to set up. All you have to do is Google it and follow the steps. So if you don't really trust these things, you can still get full usage out of them. Other than that, as you can see, we got shortcuts to our settings, which this is really just control the settings here. And you can see if I angle up, we got access to control our display. And this one taps out at uh, 4K resolution. We can control what our remote does when we push certain keys, so on and so forth. And we can jump back into the regular Android settings here. Okay. Um, also, if I jump back and we go home here, say you don't want to go to that extra menu, you can just jump into the regular settings right here. Okay. So really good stuff. Or let's say, again, you want to just do away with this all together. You can just sideload a Android launcher, and then you have a stock Android experience. And then this is what your app drawer looks like. So pretty much, you have a stock Android experience with a slightly tweaked overlay, as I said. And out of the box, this guy comes with five it, um, apps which are what I would consider bloat. Other than that, you have no bloatware on this device, and out of the box, it did also come with a Android TV like version of YouTube. But if I jump into the settings here and I scroll down to my apps, you guys can see that I did uninstall that and I loaded up the regular YouTube right here, as you can see. And it also came with Netflix out the box and a bunch of other media apps. So you can see Media Center, the KD Player. I, I loaded up uh, Hulu, came with the Play Store already. It came with Firefox. It has its own built-in file browser. And it also came with Root Browser. And then I loaded up all the other apps I like to use. So this is my hashtag Animania app, which is what I use to watch my anime and all that good stuff. So, y'all can see, this is how I can configure it, which gives me quick access to the apps that I like to use. Now, you can add or take away any apps here. Now, I think the maximum on here is eight. 
So you can see I don't really quite have the maximum. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could add one more. But really, these are the ones that I go to the most. So you can see I got Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, Hashtag Animania, the settings, if I need to adjust something, and then I got YouTube. Okay? Other than that, if you want to load up videos, then you can access them here. Or if you want to load up Kodi, you can access that here. Or if you just want to sign into the Google Play Store, you know, you're going to take it on faith. You sign in, you set it up like it was a regular Android box or Android device, and you're good to go. But other than that, the software on this is really, really nice. And in terms of daily performance, I'd have to say that it's really, really good. Uh, didn't have any issues with the Bluetooth. Didn't have any issues with crashes, hiccups, or stutters. Nothing like that. So the overall hardware, software, build quality, and design on this device is top notch. Now let's get into some positives and negatives of this TV box. Then we're going to talk about the price. And I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts and a recommendation or two. So let's start off with the negatives. And this is where I had one of the biggest learning curves. Now out of the box, they only give you the remote. And as I said, the remote, although it does offer some features, it is at times kind of inconvenient. So for instance, if I wanted to browse the web here and I load up Firefox, okay, if I'm using the remote, then I gotta use these on-screen keys and navigate around. Now this is extremely slow. Or I could turn off the arrow and navig navigate the letters like this using the arrow keys on the remote. Again, this is extremely slow and I would recommend that you get a keyboard and mouse to make this experience faster. Now an another issue that I have is that when you load up your keyboard and mouse, it will recognize it out of the box and you'll have full functionality. As you can see, I can type, I can backspace, I can copy and paste, but certain things like enter won't do anything or it'll launch random keys. And I found to fix that, you got to dive into the settings up there, which is up here in the corner. If I pull this down real quick, you dive into these settings and you got to configure this. Okay, and you know, it is really a hassle. I figure that it, since it's very plug and play, it should just recognize that out the box. But I do like the fact that they give you the ability to configure this. So if we dive in, you can configure what the remote does and you can configure what your keyboard and mouse do when you plug them in, as well as you can configure your uh, virtual keyboard that comes up or you can turn it off entirely if you have a standard keyboard and mouse plugged up. Now, it's inconvenient and I feel like they need to tweak that. That's why I'm putting that in the negatives. Okay? Other than that, the only other um, negative that I can see is that across the bottom here, you can see that we have on-screen keys and we have a hide key. Now, if you hide the buttons, because sometimes these buttons get in the way, when you're doing certain things like watching YouTube or Netflix or so on and so forth, sometimes the buttons don't hide. If you hide the buttons, there's no um, shortcut or key combo that you can hit to unhide the buttons, or at least I haven't found any. And to fix that, you have to completely restart the device or power it off and power it back on. Other than that, you have your volume controls here. So I could turn it up turn it down, I can control the notification sounds, I can control the overall media volumes, alarms, so on and so forth. I could take screenshots from here, really good stuff. So yeah, now the next little negative I have is in the recent apps here. Now being as this is Android, you can see if I scroll up, we have the ability to clear all, if I tilt up here, sorry I got a bad angle, we have the ability to clear all. But as you saw, we don't have the ability to X off the apps right away. And I found that to X off the apps, I kind of got to drag an app this way, snap it back that way, and then it either swipes away or I get these X's. And then I can X off the individual apps. 
So I'm thinking that there might be a slight issue in the software, or I'm not sure what they did, but that's another little gripe that I had. Other than that, though, I have to say, in terms of daily performance, this Android TV box performs extremely well, regardless of whatever I threw at it. Now, as I said in the unboxing, my original purpose for picking this up was because I wanted to see if I can replace my Chromecast and my stick PC with this Android TV box. And I got, uh, I got about a 50-50. So I can replace my uh, Chromecast with this TV box, but I can't replace my stick PC. Sorry if you guys hear those notifications going off. Can't reach that right now. And the reason why is, that one of the main things that I do on my stick PC is I fill in descriptions for my YouTube videos and I do some little edits inside of the YouTube editor, okay? And you guys know I recently started using uh, KaiMaster, or however you pronounce that, and that's what I use to edit my videos now. Now, I love my smartphones, and I love the ability to do so many things with my smartphones, but sometimes you just need a bigger screen. So as a result, I was looking into getting maybe a tablet, maybe a Chromebook, or getting something like this. And sadly, I have to report to you guys, if you were looking into doing something similar to this as well, it does work, but there's way too many hoops to jump through to get it to work right, okay? It's plug and play, so I can plug in my smartphones and it picks it up. But it doesn't register the drive, so I can't transfer back and forth files. But I can load my files, video files, onto a USB uh, flash drive and plug it into the TV box. And then it sees the files, and then I can edit them. But um, for the file sizes that I use, it works, but it has a tendency to freeze or crash. So if you wanted to pick up a uh, TV box like this and do some type of genetic, uh, or generic, not genetic, generic editing or things of that nature, it'll work, but it's not the best experience, so I can't recommend it. So that's where I would say I got 50-50, because it does one-up the Chromecast because it provides a lot more functionality than the Chromecast does, but it's not as convenient. But I'll take functionality over convenience. I've said it multiple times, okay? I'm convenient to a point, but at the end of the day, functionality always wins, okay? So that is a little bit of a negative there. But other than that, I have to say that this TV box performs extremely well. All right. So now let's get into the price. I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts and a recommendation or two. Now, I know it took me a long time to get this video done for you guys. Like I said, this was a new experience for me. And um, at checkout, this TV box and the splitter combo came up to $80 for me. As of the recording of this video, that whole package comes up to $95 right now. Again, if this video piques your guys' interest, all links to where to pick up everything that I featured and talked about in this video will be located down below in the video description. So, wrapping this up, bringing this to a conclusion, can I recommend that you guys pick up this TV box for that price of $95? And I'd have to say yes, and here's why. A TV box um, does wonderful things. Like, let's say you're looking to cord cut or get rid of your regular cable box or service or just keep your internet then a tv box is perfect because you get the tv box you kill your cable connection you keep the internet and you still have access to all of your shows especially if you get a stock slightly skinned tv box like this because it's really extremely easy to load up any app that you would use on your phone. And there are a bunch of streaming apps out there that let you watch uh, TV shows and movies uh, a day after they air or things like that. 
Now, I'll provide a link to a good friend of mine's um, I Tech You Out guy. He has a bunch of videos on apps and websites that you can use to watch uh, TV, movies, sports, so on and so forth from your smartphone and or your Android TV boxes. I'll link some videos down below in the video description. So, my main reason for recommending this is if you want a cord cut and you're looking to save a little bit of money or, you know, you just want more of an Android experience because you, cause you like it, but you need it on a bigger screen, then I can easily recommend this here. All right, so that pretty much does it, guys and gals, for this full review. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please help your boy out and give the video a thumbs up. That really does help me out. You don't know how much. As I said earlier, all links to everything that I talked about in this video will be down below in the video description. So if this video piqued your interest, down below in the video description should be like a one-stop shop for you guys, and you should be good to go. As well as I'll have those links to I Tech You Out Guys videos um, so you can really customize this the way you would like. Okay? That being said, um, if you guys and gals know anyone out there looking for the best performing devices and products at the cheapest possible prices, please share with them my channel because I'm doing this for everyone because we all deserve the best. Also, this whole video was recorded using the 12 megapixel rear facing camera on the Moto G6 at 720p 30fps with no external microphones hooked up. So please let me know what you think of the overall video quality and audio. And in terms of stabilization, I am using the newer R smartphone rig and my Mini Man Frodo tripod to shoot this video. So please let me know what you guys think of the overall quality, stabilization, audio, all that good stuff down below in the comments. That being said, I hope everyone has a great evening and I will catch you guys and gals in my next video. Peace, everybody.